I should wear denim shirts more. Hello and welcome to another episode of the series where I talk about Hoyas that I love. And today we have something very special. It is in bloom for the first time and we have two different plants here. One is a subspecies of this species and you already know the species, it's in the title. It's Hoya denomensis. This is Hoya denomensis here. She is in bloom. And then we have Hoya denomensis subspecies, <laughs> wow, subspecies Amari, which has flowers on two peduncles. They're looking good so far. I'm just going to show you this plant. Okay, we need to some, wait. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I want to show you this plant here. I think actually you saw me rescue this, first of all, in one of the videos. This is Hoya denomensis that I got from Betsy from France, Betsy Begonia. And this plant, I, I think I might have still another part of it. When it arrived, it looked good for a couple of days and then it lost all the leaves. So it took a couple of cuttings, which didn't look really good, but you know, I was like, let's give it a go. And they have rooted, they have grown really nicely. And I was not really confident that I was gonna get this to bloom. I never saw it attempt to bloom. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it bloomed. And I wasn't even prepared. I didn't even see it coming. I just saw one day these buds and they were quite large. And now we have flowers. And my goodness, these are gorgeous. Wait, I'll try to get a bit closer. I will take photos right after this video. I hear that this one has bloomed for a very short time. Different sources say different things. They really just hang so beautifully. This plant is similar in appearance to Hoya campanulata, but the difference is in the corona and on the back of the flower. And if you want to see the difference, if you want to study it, I suggest to pause the video here because I will put insert from Hoya study corner and you can see the comparison between the two plants. Now this Hoya denomensis comes from Danum Valley, Sabah, Borneo. And that's how it got its name, Hoya denomensis. There are a couple of clones of this one. My friend uh, from UK, Julie Kennedy, she has a clone that has UT accession number. It looks slightly different. The Corolla looks slightly different, but she tells me that it's in bloom for three days or so. I don't know, this is the first day for me. And uh, I read that it's in bloom only for a day. So I will be very, very quick with taking photos. And by the time I post this, I will find out. So I will just insert here for how many days it was in bloom. This other plant, Hoidonomensis subspecies Amari, comes from Sumatra, North Sumatra. And I think Padang Sidempuan. <laughs> I might be mispronouncing that. I think it's Padang Sidempuan, which is, I think, in North Sumatra. But, you know, don't, don't just... You know, Google that, <laughs> Google that. Verify all the information that you hear. I don't detect any scent on the flower. There is some nectar, not a lot, but I don't detect any scent here. It is supposed to have a weak scent, but I just don't smell anything. I did smell it this morning. It was something weak, but I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you much about the scent. I'll make sure to include some nice footage of that. They just look so beautiful. When I started collecting Hoyas, this was not so easy to find. You would often get bamboozled and you would get Hoya campanulata or cistianta, but that one is now campanulata. And it was difficult to get actual Hoya denomensis. And now I think it's much, much more common in cultivation. It's just a very beautiful plant. And I think they do look very, very similar. I would not be disappointed if this turned out to be Hoya Campanulata. The other clone I got from Carolina from Sweden. And I think I got this potentially last year. It's a really, really fast grower. And I got this one later for sure. This one was at least a couple of months earlier, but you can see just the difference in growth. This one really struggled in the beginning, and this one recently did struggle. Again, this is the Nemensis subspecies Amari, and I don't have great photos of the flower at the moment of recording, but I do hope that I catch them this time in much better light, <laughs> because the last time, yeah, I just wasn't very happy. We do have two peduncles. You can see one and the other one filled with buds. And this plant was plagued by mites, so I think she could have even grown bigger and more beautiful, but you know, it is what it is. 
I did had to cut off quite recently, and it might have been in a video, a significant portion of the vine. And I can see that the leaves are still damaged, so I think one more mite treatment. These are not the broad mites, these are just the regular spider mites, which, you know, sometimes will come and visit your thin-leaved Hoya. You can actually see that leaf, how it's damaged there from the mites. I did not have issues with this one when it comes to that. This one just went through a shock when it comes to transport. It looked fine when it arrived, but then bam. And I would say that when I compare the two clones, they're quite similar in the, in the thickness. I actually never compared them. I don't know if this one will be a good plant to trellis. This one somewhat is. In the beginning, it wasn't. In the beginning, it actually had a similar growth, and I think that's here, and then it actually pushed out a vine, which I'm very glad that I could get it on a trellis. I don't mind this look either. I think that looks very nice, but I just, you know, don't have so much space for this to grow indefinitely big. Both of these plants are in pond, in self-watering pots, and they do need a lot of water in my uh, experience. I don't know if I will keep them in pond forever. I do see some damaged roots here, which has been my experience with pond but a lot of good roots as well. So I might just put this in pumice. I'm not really sure. I do need to refill the reservoir on this one. The reason why that is empty is because I recently showered it, so I you know, tend to empty the reservoirs. This one recently got water, but this one, because it's in a small pot, needs watering very, very frequently, despite the reservoir. It doesn't really do much for it. It was watered two or three days ago, and the reservoir is almost empty. And you can see that it does make a nice root system. It really likes to go for that water. This one, a little bit slower. I think this one is just a bit easier, in my opinion. Hoidunomensis of species Amari. I find it a little bit easier. I don't love that it got plagued with mites. That I find very frustrating. But, you know, I think several treatments will solve that. I did, I think I did one or two already, but I can't really remember. You know, it sucks because the leaves get permanently damaged and then you have to wait for a lot of new growth to come in. And this is new growth in this plant, all of this, after the treatment. So I think we may be okay, but yeah, I don't know. I just don't like to see the old growth that got damaged. I don't remember this one having any scent either. It was either very, very weak or just not detectable to me. Sometimes people say something has a scent. I don't smell it. Sometimes they say it doesn't, and I do smell it. I think a lot of people for Amrita said it doesn't have any scent, but I definitely smell citrus and several other people as well. These are definitely, in my opinion, low light level plants. I keep both of them in my Millsbo cabinet and they are underneath eight watt light. Now the light is just hitting this trellis for this big one, but you know, they they do stand like this one next to another. The light would be about about here. So it's hitting this trellis. It's not super far away from, from them, from the leaves, but I just don't think they would need a tremendous amount of light. They tend to do really well. They bloom well, they grow well under that lower light level. I don't find that many Hoyas with thin leaves will require a lot of light, actually. They tend to do really well with, with something less, but I wouldn't expose this to really harsh light. I think it will be easy to burn these leaves. When it comes to humidity, I can tell you that in my Millsbo cabinet, it's not super humid, maybe 50, 60%, just like in my room. I don't think that any of them, I think this one has been in my grow tent, in one of the smallest ones and it did recover there. I put it in the grow tent when it arrived to me, when it suffered through the shipping, but I then moved it to my, I think, to my Rodsta cabinet, then to my Millsbo. So they're not really getting a tremendous amount of humidity. So I think these would do really well. And I think my friend Carolina grows this one just in her room, and they do really well in regular room conditions. I just keep obsessing over these markings from mites. I really have to get over that, not look at that anymore. It is what it is. What got damaged, got damaged. That is quote of the day for Miro. When it comes to propagation, they're very easy to root. I rooted both of them in pond, but I actually had one Dinamensis before this one, and I rooted it in moss, but I think that one really, really got damaged by the mites, so I had to discard it. But it also didn't arrive quite well. 
I really did not have great experience with shipping this one. Yeah, sure, keep just swinging it, why not? This is, again, my second one, and I, that one also arrived looking well, but in a couple of days dropped almost all the leaves. The one before this one also lost all the leaves in transport, so I'm not really sure. Maybe if people have ordered this one, Hoidonomensis, maybe you can tell me what is your experience. I know this one can ship really well, because when Carolina sent it to me, it was heat wave, and it arrived really well, no really issues, but this one, I don't know, it seems to me that it's a bit more sensitive. It is a bit more thirsty in my opinion. That's what I noticed from my plant as well. Again, sure, it is a smaller pot, etc. but I think this one is just a bit more demanding. I'm really sorry they're not in bloom at the same time. It would be kind of cool because subspecies Amari also has smaller flowers. They're not very far away from being open actually, and quite, quite smaller flowers, I would say. In conclusion, not the easiest nor the most difficult Hoya, I would say, prone to mites, but it is very rewarding, very beautiful. The flowers are just, I don't know, they're so pretty. From when you see the buds, the buds are super unique. And from the moment when they open, they're just so gorgeous. I am so happy that I have this. It's one of the hoys that I would always want to have. Honestly, I wish I had several and I wish I could grow them just on my Hoya wall, but I don't think they would do really well. I think they would require more humidity than what I provide there. But I don't know, I think this would just look very cute. Maybe if you turn your Millsbo cabinet into a sort of a terrarium or something, I think it would look so cool to have this like on a wall and have it bloom. That's amazing. So pretty. I love this plant. And this is all about Hoyas I love. I will see you in the next video and I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have experience with Hoya Danumensis, leave it down below. And that is that. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex Von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, Amber Kosher, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Aspen Drake, Patsy Bougie Panda, Brad Noble, Catherine Molina, Colleen Coyle Levi, Daniela Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Dili Heredia, Ian Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Ida W, Erin Keenan, Ellen, Ellen Isaacson, Farah Gathering Moss, Gina Geisim, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppencamp, Hoji Scott, Scott, Hoya Heather, Jamie Arsenault, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Yovan Denot, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelly Gallagher, Kelso, Kimberly Polka, Kiwi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Leplan de Steph, Lisa Marie, MPLS, Lori J. Revert, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Marcelia Novosansky, Maria Stein, Marina Yarmulik, Maria West, Mars B, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun, Bruce, Moa Edmund, Nelly Yang, Niha Basu, Nicole Maroni, Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ Plan. Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Tessa Martin, Stia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Tristan Thomas, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Zenia Green, Youth of the Wallamut, Zurtarama, and Zlok of Nipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Kilone, Constance, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay Ann, Lisa Helling, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Syke, Zara, Ringlov, and Tang Watanas Cool. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, one anonymous patron, Alice Borland, Brandon Pacheco, Christina Greengrass, Colleen Coyle Levi, Couture Helvetica, Emilia Bronson, Joanna Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Jonas Bayer, Hjort Larson, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lori Ann Subramaniam, Luzmit Fernandez, Millie Spicer, Olivia Chen Muller, and Tracy the Eye Miller. <laughs>